All right. Hello, everyone. This is a little bit of a behind the scenes for Ostrov, kind of the uh, the work that went behind it. Uh, this is Elisa, our, our main character. I'm just going to quickly show you how you go through the process of getting a character that has a custom skeleton from Maya into CryEngine. There isn't much information on this out there that I've found, but I'll just keep this brief. I'm not going to go too deep into the rigging or anything. I'm just going to quickly show you a few things. So uh, here we have a version of the main character that is unrigged. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you uh, basic joint setups, and I'll quickly go over physics mesh and setting up your groups and materials for export. All right, I just wanted to quickly mention that uh, we have the uh, CryEngine toolbar up here. I'll go into more depth for this eventually, but right now I'm just going to start simple, show you basic setup for CryEngine, like the important important setup. So I'm going to just build a, a leg, just keep it simple. Joints. All right, anyway, so, you know, I'm just building my leg. Uh, keep in mind, I'm following generally the default skeleton format that they used. Uh, I, I know that naming conventions are very important. The joints always have to be named the right thing. Uh, I won't go and name these right now because I have a, a version that's completed and I'll show you the proper setup. But in any case, you want to just... These uh, extra bones in the foot, like this one in the heel here, is for... Mainly it's for IKs in the feet. So it's important that you have all the bones that are required. I don't know if this particular part is important, but I feel it might be. Um, normally I wouldn't do it this way if I wasn't working for CryEngine. In terms of putting this joint at the bottom of the foot, I'd probably put it near the middle because it gives you better deformations. But in any case, there we go. So I have this leg. This would be my heel joint. And for some reason, I don't know what this is for, but I always have it anyway. It's just an extra little bone that's at the top. It's called a toe helper or something like that. In any case, uh, once you get it inside, you know, this is basic for rigging um, any biped. Put that in place, and there you go. Not too bad, you know, you got a leg. And uh, once you have all your bones placed, the next important thing that you have to keep in mind is joint orientations and rotations. Um, this is a basic principle for rigging, but you also want to keep this in mind specifically for CryEngine because CryEngine does it in a weird way. I'm just going to hide the mesh for a minute. There we go. So here's our leg. And if I go and select the hierarchy, uh, we, you know, I just use a hot key, but you know, you can select the hierarchy up in the toolbar somewhere. Uh, wherever that may be. Yeah, I don't know. It's where it is, but you can also just type select dash i. Yeah, there you go. So you select your hierarchy. And then you can show your local rotation axes. I have it, again, in the toolbar. It's it's up in the shelf somewhere. Or, sorry, I have it in the shelf. It's up in the toolbar somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where it is anymore because, again, everything is in my toolbar. <coughs> okay, so the thing to keep in mind uh, for your orientation of your joints, make sure that your x-axis is always pointing down in the direction of the bone. Uh, that's that's how CryEngine likes it. So keeping this way will make it work how you, how you want it to. Um, another thing is you want to have the y-axis pointing away and the z-axis pointing to the side for the legs. This setup is exactly the same on the uh, on the other leg. Z-axes are the same as well, um, and the y-axes are the same. And the x should always be going down to a bone for or the direction of the bone, so up the spine, down the shoulders, up into the head. Now, once say say I set up this whole skeleton, you know, actually, I'll just go and uh, I'll go to the rigged version, just so that I can say, yeah, I completely rigged this skeleton. 
and I'll just hide all these controls that are great. Sorry, build the skeleton. I'll just hide everything else. And uh, there it is. Okay, so this is my final skeleton. Uh, yours won't be this complex if you are just doing a simple vibe head because I have a bunch of extra unnecessary things like the face and little things like the necklace and other unnecessary things that were just fun to do. Um, so you have your skeleton. You have to make sure that all your orientations are set up. And once you do that, you go and you build your controls. Done. There's your controls. Then after you've controls done, you just put in your mesh and bind it. So it's all bound, you know. So say, okay, I went through all this process and I went, hey, look, I've bound a skeleton and set it all up. Sweet. Once you have all that done, you have to go into into the attribute editor. There we go. So this part, I actually usually just have two windows of Maya open at the same time. I have one where the controls are all there and one where it's not because this part won't work otherwise. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm actually going to be destructive and just delete all my controls except for the bones just so I can show you how this works. So, okay, I have the controls all gone now. And uh, if you want to know how to do that, just hit the plus and minus key to change the size. In any case, uh, so we're going to, yeah, so I just checking that bound line is good. What you want to do now is you want to set up the limits for Ragdoll. So you select all the joints that you're going to have to set up for Ragdoll. Now to do this, you have to go into your export. So we're actually introducing the Cry Engine shelf now. And you click Add Attribute. Once you add attributes and you go into the Attribute Editor, it's already there because I've already done this, but you go down into Extra Attributes and this will appear. This isn't there unless you do the Add Attribute thing. Uh, and then you have to set off your, all your limits. So basically, what is the max you can move in the X and Y uh, and Z rotations? This is the part that was the most confusing to get working because Ragdoll is just finicky and not having a good time. So what you have to do is base your limits not off of what you see in the channel box, but instead in the attribute editor you have joint orient. And these are your true rotations for your joints. And you want to base your limits based off of that. So to do this, you'd go into each joint and you'd say, okay, how much can it move in the Z positive and negative? And then you'd say, okay, well, it can move negative 17 and positive 20, say. And in the attribute editor, in the, what was it again, Z? So you'd do like negative 15 plus 20, whatever it was. Based off of this, it would be negative 20 minus 51. Um, that doesn't equal 91. I had a higher number. But then you'd have like 15 plus negative 51 to get the higher bound. Uh, and then once you have that, you can go and play with your spring. I didn't bother, so my ragdoll's a little stiff, but you could have like a little bit of a bounce when they die. <laughs> Alright, so say we have all that done. Um, I'm going to undelete my rig, hopefully. Come on, where are you? There you go. Okay, so you have that. You have your rig. The other thing you have to set up is your physics mesh. I'll just show the one that I currently have. Now, your physics mesh, you want to have one for uh, your spine one, or your, your second joint in the spine. You want one for your the spine right, like the spine joint right up to your pelvis bone, and then your pelvis. Uh, reminding me that um, I'm actually going to quickly show you uh, some of the naming scheme that you really should follow. Actually, you kind of have to follow. You have no choice or else CryEngine will just get mad at you and say you can't do that, which is irritating, but that's how it is. So you have your pelvis, you have your spine, then spine one, then spine two, and then spine three, which I have up here because I kind of hit it because I didn't need it, but I needed to have a joint called spine three. Anyway, so you have spine three, and then you have left thigh, uh, left calf. Keep in mind, you want double underscores. Um, and then, you know, back to the other stuff. Let's see what this was actually called. Yep, so it's a toe helper. And uh, then you got your heel. Okay, so that's that's cool. You can look up all these bone names on their website. I'm not going to 
for you by going through every single name. Any extra joints, you can really just call it whatever type you want. Um, it doesn't matter. Just, just the main base skeleton matters. Uh, also, you got your, these are important. Actually, I'll mention these. You got your weapon bones. Now, if you want your weapon to be in your right hand, say just switch the names of these, and it'll it'll swap for you. That'll be easy. All right. So you have that now. You go into your physics mesh. So you have one for your shoulder, your arms, and keep in mind the materials for these have to match. So this has the same texture, this has the same texture, this has a texture, then your whole torso has a texture, then texture, 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 texture. And um, I use the default names for these materials. Uh, I would stick with that just to be safe. Um, and the naming is just based off of the bone names. So uh, you can... Um, this again is on the website as well. And if you want, you can experiment and try adding physics mesh to other pieces, but the default settings only had these and I didn't want to mess around with that too much. All right, so say you have your physics mesh set up and now you want to export. Uh, actually, before that, uh, you might notice that I have the second version here. I don't know if this is necessary, I really don't think it is, but I have it because it was in the default, and sticking to default is usually a good idea when you're starting out, which this was the first rig that we had implemented into the game, uh, Ostrov, so it's, uh, that's what we have. In any case, the idea is uh, you just parent it all under uh, the same hierarchy as the skeleton would have been. Uh, things like the upper leg, uh, or the thighs, sorry have a parent frame, and so do the arms. So parent frame, parent frame, parent frame. You can't see this parent frame because they're all in the same spot as the pelvis physics mesh. Um, and these, keep in mind, do not show up in this version. Uh, you don't put those there. Uh, and these also, keep in mind, you want to zero out all the information. That's another thing I want. I think I forgot to mention, is when you're building your actual skeleton base, Make sure all your joints are zero, zeroed out. Freeze your transformations once you put it into place, because otherwise it's just going to be a pain to work with when you're animating and when you're doing anything else. So, yeah, do yourself a favor. All right, so you have that set up. It's all dandy. Uh, then you want to take your character and you want to start putting it into uh, groups. So you want to take your mesh. I already have it put into groups, but just to show you, um, I'm just gonna hide this image. So you'd have let's take the, the coat for example. So you have your top node because I call this mesh Elisa clothing. You want to call this top node Elisa clothing. So cry export node Elisa clothing. And then you got Elisa clothing underscore group. This is getting a little redundant, but that's okay. And then Elisa clothing, the actual mesh. You need these three levels. It's completely necessary. And um, keep in mind you can have multiple meshes in here. Uh, usually the only time you do that is if they're sharing, well actually the only time you do that is if they're sharing a material. If the material is shared, that's when you can do that. Otherwise you, you don't do that. You, you, can, you make them separate. Um, so yeah, you do that. Once you have all that set up, you do that for all your chunks. Um, and okay, we say that's done, it's dandy. Move into your material editor now. No material editor up here. Now, I have two materials. I have one for the skeleton character and one for Elisa herself. Uh, to create a group, you just go create group and call it whatever you want. I'll just call it test, um, just to give you the idea. And then you'd select your object, and then you'd say, add shaders and select the geometry. I'm not going to do that simply because it's going to, it only allows you to have each object in, or each material in one group. It doesn't allow multiple groups, so if I put it in there, it would take away from here and put it in there. So you do that for all your materials. I'm going to delete this group now. Hopefully this won't mess me up later, but we'll see. Oh, okay, it's, it's saying you can't do that. Oh, there we go. So, okay, you delete it, or I deleted it. And, yeah, so the, you have your, this this will these will create uh, MTL files for uh, for your character and bring it into CryEngine. Uh, so I called it Elisa just for the sake of 
simplicity and understanding. Uh, then you have skeleton character which is your physics mesh and this little thing called no draw no draw is our friendly neighborhood triangle and he is found in here this is only needed if you are using a skeleton because what you have to do is you have to you can't just export a skeleton alone it has to have a mesh attached so say you want to attach use the skeleton and start attaching pieces to it you have to have a mesh attached. So if you don't, if you don't use this triangle, say I just use the clothing, that's my base, and I export that. Now, if I wanted to attach another skeleton to, or another character to that skeleton, this clothing would be on it every time, and uh, you'd have characters walking around with this on top of their own clothing or their own body, and it's weird. Um, so yeah, you create this. Uh, I use the 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 default names for this. Um, so I don't know why they call it dummy, but it's, it was called dummy one, skeleton character underscore group, cry export node underscore skeleton underscore character underscore, or no, that's it there, and uh, and they call the material skeleton character. Good practice is to name this your actual character and name this whatever you name this. You don't have to name it skeleton character. You can really name it whatever you want, but these are the defaults. So implementations will be a lot easier if you do it this way because you won't have to go and change names in a bunch of documents. So once you have that done, you can move on to uh, actually exporting. Now I'm aware that there's going to be an error that occurs simply because of this triangle, because right now I have it weighted to the root bone, I think, and it does not like you exporting the skeleton if anything's weighted to your root. Uh, so I'm actually just going to delete this and not export it. Uh, just for the sake of showing what we're doing. Anyway, so once you have everything set up, all your materials and whatnot, you go into your export now, and you select your location. I set up a folder in here called Elisa. Uh, it's already there, so I'm just going to save that. And then the first thing you want to do is select everything that you're going to be exporting. Um, yes, everything that I'm going to be exporting. Gonna, uh, keep in mind what I'm doing here is I'm actually deleting out everything that I don't want to export because I don't want to mess things up. So I select everything else. And you want to generate your material files. I already exported before, so it's asking if I want to replace them, which I do. And then you want to go and you want to export all. And we'll do this. Okay. And... Sometimes you'll see a warning and it'll say, like, can't find submaterials, materials so-and-so, and it'll give you, like, hundreds of those. Those warnings are fine. It just means that the materials will not be set up properly when you bring them into CryEngine, so you just have to set up the links when you bring them into CryEngine. It's really not, not a problem at all. And that's essentially it. So, I've, so in doing this, you should have a character ready to export for CryEngine, and then you can then import it into the editor. Uh, actually... Uh, Rufino, our, um, one of our programmer for the characters who did all the CryEngine work, will take it up from here in another video and explaining like the importing process. So um, that's it for, for what I'm showing you. I hope this was helpful. If, it, if you have any other questions, you know, there will probably be some contact information posted with this video in which you can go and ask for more help.